liter- like I said, the collateral that they use to secure these loans value highly inflated. It, okay, so for for a layman like myself, right? Let me repeat what you just said. Mm-hmm. So if I go to get a loan from a bank, I'm going to need collateral. Depends on what kind of loan. The, what kind of loan you're getting, mm-hmm. the amount of the loan as well. Okay, so I'm getting a, these, these were big numbers. So let's say I'm getting a $10 million loan. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need some collateral hell for yeah. $10 million. No, wait, not just hell yeah, fuck yeah. The bank is not going to let you do a signature loan on $10 million. Becky's like, bank did. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> and they didn't even get a signature. Um, Man, so, all right. So you go in, you want $10 million. Mm-hmm. The bank's going to say, what do you have that I can use for collateral? So you're going to say, I'm a business owner. I have. I have receivables from clients. I have. Um, equipment. I have property. other real. I have real property. Mm-hmm. I and like I said, I have business property, which might be movable property. So, say I'm a construction company. I have all my my big machines. Mm-hmm. I might have trucks. I might have cranes. I might have, you know, cats. I might have backhoes. I might anything. And Wait, then I might cats have cats and backhoes. Yep, Wait, cats and backhoes. I thought we were talking about construction. <laughs> So, yeah, so with all that stuff, okay, mm-hmm. let's say I spent on these cats and backhoes, mm-hmm. I spent 500000 right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm trying to get this $10 million loan, Yep. but I'm going to say my cats and backhoes, they're worth $2 million. Mm-hmm. And the bank is going to take my word at that. They're mm-hmm. not going to come out and evaluate it. They see what they should do. Uh (laughs) is what you just said Mm -hmm. what they should do because you're giving away or you are lending 10 million dollars of money that's not even yours this is 10 million dollars of depositors money right that the bank is loaning you so but that's how banks make money right they well that's how right your money is on deposit they use your money to make money right Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to safeguard because banking regulations say that you are the fiduciary, you are the holder of this money. You owe, the bank owes me, if my money is on deposit, the bank owes me a duty to make sure that my money is secure. Gotcha. So $10 million, like I said, they're not just going to let you sign and walk away. They're going to want some collateral. And what they should do is value or get a recent valuation of whatever collateral you provide. And you would get an appraiser to right. do that. Exactly. Okay. And so the appraisal is done. Everything is kosher. You sign the paperwork. I give you the money. That's not what this bank did. What this bank did was. Basically oh. took somebody's <laughs> word for it. Right. They no, Well, they didn't just take somebody's word. They helped this person cover well inflate the value to the point where they this particular bank president was literally doing the tax return for this person in order to make it look like the person had something they didn't and so they were loaning this person money and then they would loan this person more money to cover the first loan so that loan can look like it was paid so it would be the equivalent <clears throat> of, of a me Ponzi. saying it's a Ponzi uh, scheme. yo and let me borrow ten dollars you mm-hmm. let me borrow ten dollars and you're like look bro i need my money and i'm like look i ain't got it so you like i'm gonna loan you ten dollars so you pay can... <laughs> me the first ten dollars exactly right so it's a revolving debt so it's basically like a ponzi like i said it's a ponzi scheme because i'm taking money from this new loan to pay the old loan and so both loans look current. My mm-hmm. loan loss is low and everything looks fine on the books. What they were also doing was finding straw men. So, oh, let me tell you what a straw man is cuz mm-hmm, I actually mm-hmm, know this term mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I know some people got in trouble for this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, in my world, 
as far as with firearms. Mm -hmm. Felons are not allowed to purchase firearms. Uh, People who have been deemed mentally defective can't um, purchase firearms. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the felons, what they would do is they would get their girlfriends to go into the gun store, buy a gun in her name, Mm -hmm. use her background, and then give the gun to him. So that was effectively a straw purchase. Okay, so... It's almost the same thing. So what they were doing, say I own, well, let's use you. You don't own me. I was freed. (laughs) You own, what kind of business do you own? I own an edutainment business. Okay. You own an edutainment business. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm president of the bank. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I need money. What I need money for? Who the hell knows, but I need money. Your country club dues. Oh, as true. stated in this right. document. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I need money. Tuition for your kids. <clears throat> so I go to you and I say, we are going to be in a win win situation. You are going to get a loan from the bank. I'm going to help you get that loan. And the loan is going to be for $50 million. I'm going to give you 10 million of that 50 and you're going to keep the other 40 and I'll keep the other 40. You probably will never have to pay this money back. I'm going to make sure that your business is in the clear and your loans are always current. So is that what they did? So here's my question then. Hell yeah, that's what they did. And Ma- they didn't just do it one time. No. Multiple times. <laughs> yes. They did several clients. Mm-hmm. Here's yes. my question. The financials for this particular bank that we're talking about mm-hmm. were actually, aside from the bad loans, they were in pretty good shape. Not nah, see. And that's where that is exactly why the bank president and the other people involved did what they did. They wanted it to look like that. It was never like that. It was never in good they shape. They cooked everything. Like the loan losses, had they not, <clears throat> excuse me, had they not done what they did, the loan losses alone would have sunk this bank. Like every, almost every loan that this bank president and the other people involved signed off on, those were bad loans. Every last one, to the tune of how much money did they lose in the end? Do you know? I don't know the whole value. It was close to a billion. Billion dollars. Yeah. Yes. And it it it's one of um the highest losses since since the, the crash. Right. Yeah. Since the crash, like literally almost a billion dollars worth of bad loans. Well, let me tell you a story before we get back to Becky, and, and it's uh relating to this bank. So I talked to somebody who is. Very wealthy in my eyes. And he also he had accounts with this particular bank. So he came he came up to me one day and he was like, because he knew Becky worked at the bank. And first thing he said is, uh, t- tell. Tell your fiance, get a new job. And I was like, why? He was like, yeah, just, just tell tell her, get a new job. Tell her. If she don't look for, start looking for a new job now, she's going to be looking for a new job when she don't want to look for a new job. But um, some of the things he said, though, about the president of this bank is the dude was highly regarded just as a person, because after Hurricane Katrina, not too many banks were loaning money out, mm-hmm. especially the business owners. Mm-hmm. And exactly. he came through. And mm-hmm. now the dude that I'm talking about, he's legit. He, he wasn't doing any of his funny loans that I know of. But he was like, this dude was the only one in the area that was loaning loaning. money to local businesses. Yes. That is absolutely correct. So that automatically lifted him up in the eyes of the city and the eyes of business owners Mm -hmm. and some some very wealthy people. Exactly right. So which is why nobody actually dug to the own board, the board of directors of this bank. which. They literally were supposed to act as the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth pair of eyes. 
they did not delve into the things that he was doing because of that same reason, because he was highly regarded in the community. Mm -hmm. So that's why he got away with this for so long. Cause from what I understand, he started doing this when the bank first opened. Yeah. And the bank first opened in 2006. When was so, Katrina? 2005. 2005. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where did he get the capital prior to that to be able to start loaning this money out in 2006? So when he must have been wealthy prior to. Well, the bank's, the bank's assets. The bank had assets. Not if they opened in 2006, which was after Hurricane Katrina. In 2006 is when um, they. They had, the share, first, they had to buy in. So, Becky. Yep. When did you catch wind? Because, all right, I'm going to tell this story again, even though it may be a little legal ish Okay. But, like I said, the dude that I know came to me and said, do you know what's going on over there? And I'm like, well, why would I? So he started explaining to me. He was like, look, there's all this. There's some shit about some kind of a credit, a mortgage credit or some kind of credit. Historical credit. Yeah, historic, historic tax credits. Yeah. So he was like, they're like cooking all these shit and using all these credits that they're not allowed to use. No, and they, were, they were pretty much pencil whipping the hell out of the bank. That was one of the ways that they actually covered loan payments. So what what the historical tax credit is <clears throat> in the state of Louisiana, when you buy an historic building you get a credit that you can, it is actually like, I'm going to liken it to a stock or a bond because it is something that you can sell. And what you do is this credit is used against your income. So, but as I said, on your Louisiana tax return, well, you can sell these credits. So what they were doing was they were purchasing historical buildings and ghostwriting credits. So not that they really had these credits because these buildings were not eligible for the credits, but on paper they had credits. And every time like a loan payment came due for some of these loans, they would pencil in a certain amount of credits that was sold <laughs> to the bank to cover this loan payment. Gotcha. So dude was telling me about all this, right? So I forwarded the information to Becky. I said, uh, you know, there's anything strange going on at work? And she was <laughs> like, no, not really. But then like within a couple of weeks of that, people that were in the know, started shorting the shit out of, out of the, the stock, stock mm -hmm. for this company. And ladies and gentlemen, when you short a stock, you are betting against it. You're saying that the value of this stock is going to plummet. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a article in the Gazette or one of those, one of, one of these local small newspapers saying that, yo, you should short this mm -hmm. bank because X, Y, and Z. And I remember, didn't the bank make a big deal out of that article that yeah, was published? Yeah, they tried to right, uh, because discredit it. Mm -hmm. we, we are solid. I remember right. that. I remember. Mm -hmm. So that's when Becky started putting, connecting the dots too. So now this dude was telling me again, tell, tell Becky she needs to find a new job now. So I'm like, Becky, you need to find a new job. If it's coming from this dude, more likely than not, it's true. So, so when I started to notice things, um, was some of the activities that we normally did as a bank. Mm -hmm. Um, so for example, um, we had what's called, what we had a all, called an all employee meeting and we had a quarterly. And so that was supposed to be like, um, a, a, a group meeting to say what's going on with the bank, how well we're performing, kind of give an overall update of the financial stability of the bank. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we hadn't had one for two quarters mm. in that year. I'm like, that is odd, because we're like on target. We do it every quarter. 
Um, and there were some things uh, that I was doing at work uh, in my day to day that my boss was like, we need to hold off on that. And it had to deal with the stock because we have uh, we had what's called an ESOP, an mm-hmm. employee stock ownership plan. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so my boss was telling me, you know, we need to hold up on this thing because we have we're under audit and they can't do some things because of this audit. So explain, we have to wait for the audit to explain, be finished. Explain audit. What what audit? Basically, they had um, their banks are audited or basically reviewed constantly by outside um auditing firms by um, the state by well. the by federal um the fdic I was just they come and they they look at your books to make sure that you're doing everything correctly um well there was this little hiccup uh, uh as expressed to me by my supervisor um with tax credits and <laughs> with <laughs> With um, with our stock. Um, so, and that was probably towards the, the last quarter of the year. And um, then they announced, oh, we're selling nine of our branches. And these were the most lucrative branches in the bank at the time. So I'm like, okay, so no all-employee meeting. They're selling branches. Nobody They're not doing anything stock. with stocks. Right. This audit is taking forever. Something's up. Yeah. And then I'm getting information from, from Dan <laughs> from outside <laughs> saying that something's wrong. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, maybe I should take him up on that advice and go ahead and, and start looking. Right. What then happened was... Becky was sitting at her desk, and your desk was like in a corridor type of situation. Yeah, cubicle corridor type thing. And she chilling. She typing on her keyboard. I know the company's going down, but I'm getting the paycheck, so I'm chilling. And the ATF, FBI, DEA, all these bastards got off different elevators it from was the, different. It was the FBI. No, oh, actually, it actually, was the FBI. Wasn't there. When did the FDIC? It was yeah. the federal auditors that yeah. came in. But and they, I wasn't there. They, I had gotten wait, another come, job. Come on. Well, you know, this, <laughs> Let was, me this might be a legal lie. My story <laughs> okay. before you interrupt. Okay. So, show some respect, damn it. <laughs> um, so. Okay. Becky is sitting at her desk, do 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 do, getting the paycheck, do 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 do. Don't gotta work that hard, cause we all going down. And then elevators start now. It's a big building, big square, right? There's elevators on all four sides, so all four elevators at the same time came up to <laughs> Becky's floor, and this is all you heard was ding 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 ding, and then you had. FBI coming out of this elevator, DEA coming out of this elevator, FDIC coming out of this elevator, and pest control coming out of this ele- <laughs> elevator. And they all just started converging on everyone. Nobody moved. Everybody into the middle of the room. And they would not let the employees leave until they signed some shit saying that something. Well, one, they wouldn't let them leave. Two, they wouldn't let them leave before um, they searched their desk. Mm-hmm. Um, Imagine the one motherfucker that has some weed in their desk. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man, really? Um, so they were looking for any kind of documentation, things that would Anything support that, this, right. you know, raid. So, wait, the moral of this story is. Don't keep your weed in your drawer. No. No. No illicit drugs. Because exactly. you never know when there will be a massive raid. Keep it in your car. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, there are a lot of people in the community that used to work for the bank that are, in a way, traumatized. Um, they, It's almost like a death. Almost like a, a loss. Some people um, have felt this emotionally. Um, because the people that weren't involved in all the scamming, um, they felt like, you know, it was their work family. This right. is, you know, right. Right. A, a place where I spend most of my time and the, the people, people I, I spend, spend most, most of my, my time, time with. with. Right. And, you know, it's kind of hard to believe that these people were crooks. Yeah. And I'm not just talking. I'm, I am talking Al Capone, 
mafia type had a billion dollars. A that's that's billion a big with a B number. Billion. So Becky, let's get into this plea deal because there there has been numerous people that got indicted mm -hmm. and well, not everybody. See, there's a difference. So let's talk about the difference between an indictment and mm -hmm. something called a bill of information. I believe what Becky is holding in her hand is the result of a bill of information. Correct. Wait, what's the difference? OK, so here's the difference. If you cooperate. If you're a snitch. Yes. Yeah. You don't get <laughs> stitches. You get a bill of information. OK. If you do not cooperate, you receive an indictment. So basically one is they they both serve the same purpose, which is to lay out what your crime is and how the crime was perpetrated. That, that's what the indictment or the bill of information does. How you get one versus the other is, as I said at the top of this, whether you cooperate or not. If you cooperate, you don't. there's no grand jury involved. And basically what a grand jury is, is a group of people. They say this should go to trial. Right. Well, that say is you have enough evidence to indict. You have enough evidence to bring charges against this person for a particular thing. So that's, you don't go, if you're cooperating, the district, the, not the district attorney, the U.S. attorney or the assistant U.S. attorney does not have to go before the grand jury and set out all this evidence and have the grand jury deliberate and bring back a verdict as to whether or not they have anything. So all these people then, rather than being indicted, there was a lot of people that was thrown into the mix. And at first it was, if I'm not mistaken. There will be some indictments handed down because there are some people who, even after all of this, so there are at least, what, Beck, correct me if I'm wrong, there are at least, at this point, there are three people who have pled guilty. Correct. And, and those were the people that received loans, not necessarily the people that were working. Well, no, there's one big fish mm -hmm. who is like the major rat. The pre Oh, okay. Okay. The, the I major got you. the major rat is basically said, Fuck y'all, I ain't going down. I'm telling on everybody. Mm -hmm. And this was an attorney as well, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes. The, the <laughs> Yes. Sad sad but true. Ladies and gentlemen, attorneys <laughs> are snitches. Mm -hmm. That is sad but true. Sad but true. So he basically turned on everybody. Just gave up everything. And he is the reason why there are more indictments and bills of information that are in the pipeline. There are more people who are cooperating. And for what I understand, there's like um, major movement happening with the board of directors now. Mm -hmm. So um, because they're the ones that are supposed to keep everyone in check exactly right and and they did not and there may or may not be some personal liability involved hmm. because it's like dereliction of duty they didn't do what they were supposed to do so keep that in mind the listeners and viewers if you are in what's called a fiduciary role yes and and in my role at the job that i do I am a fiduciary for example, a retirement plan. Right. Um, so if I do something wrong or mm -hmm. shady, mm -hmm. I could be held per liable. Personally personal liability. Yo, didn't you see like right before the indictments and the Bill of Rights and all this other <laughs> shit come raining down? <laughs> Bill of didn't, information. Didn't you start seeing people moving large, 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 large amounts of money uh through the retirements and things of that nature 